Well, good morning, everyone. And I hope that everybody can hear me out there. We're, Dennis was kind enough to actually order and do some research on it. Trying to get this thing to work, we have Sheila sitting back there in the crime room to see if we have sound or not. But um, so uh, this is a day that the Lord has made. And talk to some of you for since last year. So 2020 is in the high, it, it is in our rear view mirrors. So hopefully this prayer will just be a much better year. So at this time, I will be sort of in the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning out there. Hope everyone had a nice New Year's. Welcome to our Saviors. Are there any church announcements this morning? Ron? Uh, just a reminder that after uh, church next Sunday, there's going to be a, a short uh, congregational meeting. Just to remind those of you that can make it, we have a short congregational meeting after church next Sunday, the 10th. Any other announcements? Um, I just want to say, with my hand commitment to that, I guess if anybody wants to bring them next Sunday, but next Sunday we'll take them and just get them distributed. So um, one more week to bring them there. Anybody else wants to donate anything at the next Sunday will be the cutoff. Any more donations for uh, mittens under the tree? Um, by next Sunday, and then it will be distributed to the needy. Any other announcements this morning? If, if not, please stand for our call to worship. <coughs> Some people say that Christmas is for children. Christmas, Christmas is, is also for people of age and experience. Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, and Zachariah, the priest, accept a new birth breaking in to all their familiar patterns. Simon the singer and Anna the prophet hope for many years to see the Messiah and then recognize the Messiah in a humble couple's baby. How then shall we respond to Christ's promised coming? With willingness for change, with patience in long waiting, with silence and singing, with the ability to see Christ in the least likely of our brothers and sisters. Together, let's join in our opening prayer. Great of God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. We come to you in a new year with new desires and old fears, new decisions and old issues, new dreams and old weaknesses. Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future. Because you are a God of love, we know that you accept all the mistakes of the past. Because you are a God of faith, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and praise. We come into your presence with gladness and a joyful noise, and we serve and bless you, praying the prayer of our Savior Jesus Christ. Our opening of this morning is holy, holy, holy.
we're enjoying this we gather together and hear the good news. The good news that we are loved. We can't hear that enough, I don't think, sometimes, that we are loved more than we certainly love ourselves. Sometimes we don't do a very good job of loving ourselves. But God loves us. God seeks to restore all who are lost and pick up all those who have found themselves broken down on the road of life. So in the spirit of confession, that gives us the freedom to confess our sins. So at this time, would you please join together with me in our prayer of confession? Creator God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. We come to you in this new year with new desires and old fears, new decisions and old issues, new dreams and old weaknesses. Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future because you are God of love. We know that you accept all the mistakes of the past. Because you are a God of our faith, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and praise. We come into your presence with gladness and a joyful noise, and we serve and bless you. Pray in your prayer. Please join me in our prayer of confession. <laughs> Jesus Christ, God with us, you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We have not always lived up to your expectations for us. We confess that to you often we are impoverished in spirit. Grant us the fullness of your grace. Wrapped up in ourselves, open us to others. Slow to learn, teach us in your ever-expanding truth. Proud or little, wet by hunger and thirst for justice. Scattered like grains from the field, gather us into a single loaf. Distracted of mind, direct us to what is most important. Your love for us, your will for our lives, and your sustaining presence in every circumstance. Amen. Please join me in our unison assurance of heart. God says to us, you are my children. I love you. I'm proud of you. Stand firm in your renewed commitment. Know that I have given you. I call you by name. You are mine. I have entered into covenant with you and will stand by you in all times, in all places. Dare to live fully the life to which I have called you.
is Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on the nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, and your camels of Midian and Ephra. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thank you, Patrick, for the sharing of the word. Our gospel lesson picks up the narrative after Jesus' birth where they had to flee to Egypt. And we will pick up there in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and they went to Egypt, remaining there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Now when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under according to the time he had learned from wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Archelaus was, was ruling over Judea in places of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And then after being warned in a dream, a dream he went to the, away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth. So that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. May God bless him yet to the sharing of this God's word. You want kids, you want to come up or stay back there? We're talking about snowflakes today. I want to stay back there today? What's that? No? Okay. Let's talk about snowflakes today. Who here does not like snow? Who doesn't like snow? I don't see, I, I can see your hands if you're watching this live stream today, um, but I don't see any hands raised here. Let me ask you that question in March. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, I love the snowshoe, things like that. But you know the amazing thing, it's true. Have you ever looked at, at, at a microscope at, at a little tiny snowflake? Did you all know that every snowflake is different? Now, we don't have too many different ones here at our since we will be taking the tree down, I presume, next Sunday or sometime. I don't know when, but we'll be taking the tree down. I, I had to find two that were different because all of these, I think, are pretty much the same. But they're all different. And you know, I think about that, uh, for all of you young people watching and young person inside, we're all different. Every person in this room, every person in the world is different from the other person, and we all have unique personalities that God has given us. And God gives us our own unique way to love. And the reason we have this thing we call faith is to be able to do that, is to be able to learn to express that. 
That also means we need to learn to get along with the, those other snowflakes that are different than we are. That's a really important lesson to learn. Because we're all in this together. We are. Whether you like it or not, we are. We're all in the same boat. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for the lesson of the snowflake that we're all doing. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to gather and worship, to sing praise, to pray, and to give thanks. Amen. Well, it's 2021. You feel any different? 2020 is in our rearview mirrors, supposedly. Now, what a year. Most every one of us is looking at 2020 in that rearview mirror and saying, good riddance, throw it out, right? It's said that in Rome, or on New Year's, there is a tradition of literally throwing old things out the window to start the new year free of the past. So if you get that couch or you get that chair you don't like, you throw it out the window. Seriously. Now that can be a problem if you're walking below. But I guess the moral of that story is that if you're fortunate enough to be in Rome, some New Year's Eve, you best keep an eye skyward. Somebody might be throwing out a heavy piece of furniture or air conditioner, whatever the case may be, as you're passing by. That's their tradition. Now, a pastor named Patricia Ferris tells about being in Mexico one year with her husband on New Year's Eve. And they found themselves in the middle of something they didn't really quite understand at the time, but they discovered it's similar to that tradition I just talked about in Rome. It was late in the evening, yet not quite midnight, and the central square was full of people, live music with kids, old people, families, stands were set up, kiosks were set up, and people were selling, in addition, all kinds of souvenirs and food and so forth, an array of very inexpensive pottery, mostly simple clay plates. Now what was interesting is that the people who were buying these simple clay plates would stand back and throw them with full force against one great wall of a cathedral in the community square, smashing the plate to smithereens. Very cathartic. It was loud and raucous, and yes, it was exciting, according to Ms. Ferris. Only later did she learn that the tradition grew out of a great deep human need to throw out the old, to start the new year free of old resentments with new resolutions, Notice they didn't talk about New Year's resolutions. Old fears, old prejudice, old sins. Throw them out, said to Patricia Harris. <coughs> Ferris. Let them smash against the strong fortress of faith, and let's be, let be done with it. God is ready to offer healing and new life now. Velma Sewell Daniels in her book, Celebrate Joy, tells of interviewing a man. Some of you may like this, because I know I look at 2021, I think, okay, I'm going to be this, 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 this old in 2021. And if I make it to 2022, I'm going to be this old. In other words, getting older. But the end, you would have something different. Inter going, to, uh, going up to Alaska to visit some of the Indian people in the Arctic Circle. Never ask an Inuit person how old they are, the man said. If you do, they will say, I don't know, and I don't care. Not a bad philosophy, right? And the man added, he doesn't. He said, if anyone told him at one time, and he pressed the Indian with it further, and he asked him a second time how old he was, and the Indian said, almost, almost, that's all. Almost, that's all. So he asked, almost what? And the Indian said, almost one day. Almost one day. Many didn't have a clue what the Inuit meant by that until he talked to another man who lived in the Arctic Circle for over 20 years. And he was a newspaper man who had written a book about the Inuit people and their customs and their beliefs. And he said the Inuit believed that when they go to sleep at night, they die. That they are literally dead to the world. Then when they wake up in the morning, they have been resurrected with a new life. They have been resurrected. I like that thought. Therefore, no Indian was more than one day old. So that is what the Indian meant when he said almost a day old. The day wasn't over yet. Now, I like to get rid of the arthritis and sometimes a foggy memory. Um, 
it, you know, but uh, if I'm only one year old, right? And have some of that. Well, some of, the, some of that back anyway. Life above the Arctic Circle is harsh and cruel. And mere survival becomes a major accomplishment. He explained further. But you never see an Inuit person who seems worried or anxious. They have learned to face one life one day at a time. One day at a time. Have you, have you learned to put worry and anxiety and live only one day at a time? How many of us have robbed today because we're worried or afraid of tomorrow? It gives no meaning to that familiar ad admonition that today is the first day for the rest of your life. I know that's worn out, that's happening, all of that kind of stuff. But it really makes sense, doesn't it? One day at a time. Our scripture lesson for the day deals with people who also live in a harsh and cruel world. It's a concluding portion of the Christmas story. After the shepherds and the wise men were gone, and an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said to him, Herod's going to be looking for this child in order to kill him. So get up, take the child, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you to leave. It's a scene of darkness and dread, of fear and plight. The humble couple gathers their few belongings together, and under the cover of darkness, they fled to Egypt. So Joseph and Mary and the newborn son must flee for their lives, because Herod was killing babies. Very human drama that has been repeated through the ages. Even today, around the world and within our own borders, families are indeed packing up their belongings, setting off, seeking refuge, running for their lives. And in some ways, as we're leaving 2020, after the difficult year that we've gone through in so many different ways, we do wonder, don't we, what 2021 will bring? With all of its unknowns, and for a lot of people, the unknowns of this new year fill them with dread. Now, I want to ask for a survey of those of you who might be afraid of what the future might hold. Because we only really have today, don't we? Sure, we have a plan, but we've only got today. Mary and Joseph fled to Egypt, but the story does not end there, even when Herod dies. And they feel free to turn, return to Israel. They dare not return to their former home in the province of Judea. Herod's son, Archelaus, has succeeded him. And there's still much to fear. We don't know what Archelaus would do. Thus they sent him to sell it in Nazareth. Now, the most basic of all human emotions, I would suspect, is fear. Some people, I, I, I don't get this personally, say that the greatest fear in the poll is the fear of public speaking. They'd rather die than speak in public. I, I don't get that. I'm not an extrovert, but I just don't get that. So. Uh, but anyway, um, but the fear in proper doses is healthy. Many people, however, are, are almost totally dominated by their fears. They're paralyzed. It may be a fear of failure. It may be a fear of ridicule. It may be a fear of places or people or trying something new. There are many fears as there are demands upon all of us as humans. Anything we ask to do can create fear. Why well, have never done that before? That's outside my comfort zone. Fear has been in overdrive in this past year, hasn't it? And still dominates the lives of many people going into 2021. Everybody's afraid of something. Actor Spencer Tracy, one of my favorite actors, of years gone by, had a fear of flying. So did Judy Garland. Modern actress Jennifer Aniston and Whoopi Goldberg was to be afraid of flying. Pop star Whitney Spears is said to be go into a panic over encountering large lizards, which I think is interesting. Madonna's terrified by thunder, and actress Scarlett Johansson is terrified by birds. I hope she never sees Alfred Hitchcock's movie by that same name. She'll never be the same again. And we're told that the French philosopher Albert Camus was phobic about driving a car, and ironically, he died, died in a car accident while a friend was driving. Finally, Couple more. Sigmund Freud had a fear of traveling anywhere outside of Vienna. I wonder what kind of repressed desire explains that. There's an intriguing story also told about the late J. Edgar Hoover, former director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The story may be apocryphal, but one source tells it is true. It seems that Hoover once made a trip to California 
and while making a left turn, his chauffeur-driven car was struck by another car from behind. And the FBI director, who had been sitting in the left seat behind the driver, was badly shaken by the incident. And from then on, Hoover refused to sit in the left rear seat of a car. He called it the death seat. But even more amazing from that trip forward, Hoover forbade any left turns on auto trips that he was in. You imagine that? No left turns. There, the, the, thereafter, his aides had to go through the most complicated arrangements to get FBI director Hoover from place to place without making any left turns. Think about that. It's true. The director of one of America's most important law enforcement agencies was reduced to a bundle of nerves by the thought of making a left turn. We all have the capacity to make our lives miserable by giving in to our fears. But faith helps us to step into this new, this new year courageously in spite of fear. Courage. It's an admirable quality if you think about it, isn't it? And encourage means to put courage in. You've heard me talk about that. It allows us to face our fears at a time and do battle. But courage can be a limited ally sometimes. It can sometimes fall prey to another enemy, an emotion with an interesting name called discouragement. When I used to speak at uh, 911 dispatcher uh, conferences, I would always have a package of balloons. And I would blow one up to talk about what encouragement as I'm talking and I'm walking around, you know, in the ballroom to them. And then I'll hand it to them, and, and I'll, ask, I'll give them a fresh one, and, and I don't reuse them. Somebody asked me that once. And I'll ask them to blow it up. I said, you just give me what we call encouragement to your organization. And I'm going to explain that. I don't have time here. I said, don't let it go. That's what discouragement does, and that's how quickly discouragement can set in. That balloon is no longer the balloon that it was. For courage to be lasting and effective, it must be able to see hope. It sees no hope, it quickly transforms into discouragement. The opposite of fear is not courage, the opposite of fear is faith. Faith gives us courage to do what we need to do in spite of fear. You see the majesty and glory in all of that? Even in the darkest of times, God is there. Just as God is with us in our difficult times, Whatever it is we face in 2021, life was hard for Mary and Joseph, but they were not alone. And they knew that. God was with them. And that's the meaning of faith. Not that the way will be made easy for us, but that God will be with us going through that valley of the shadow of death. So why are we afraid? Why are we downcast? God is at work. Because of him, all things are working toward the good for those who love him. Why not turn our fears over to God? Why not smash them against the wall, as Patricia Ferris says? God is ready to offer healing and hope. God can free us from all of our fears. I close with a familiar parable. I don't know if it's really true, but I think it, it, it's, its imagery is very powerful. To talk about how fear can limit us and how we can become so discouraged and maybe 2020 has been one of the discouraging years. In the jungles of Thailand, once a wild elephant was made captive, hunters would tie a big, long, heavy chain around the elephant's foot. And the other end is tied around a huge banyan tree. And the great elephant would pull with all of its strength, but it won't budge that banyan tree. And after struggling against the tree and the chain for days and weeks, and weeks of fighting, the elephant finally gives in, it surrenders, it gives up, it is discouraged. When that happens, the hunter can take the elephant and chain it to a little tiny iron stake in the ground. The elephant will never attempt to pull away because it still associates that chain with that banyan tree. It never realizes how easily it could achieve its freedom. Without faith, and facing the future, we are in bondage to our past, to our worries, our anxieties. But with trust in God, we can be set free. Let any other person, each day is a new life. Christ can give us that new life as well. And today is the first day for the rest of our lives. My prayer is that we can approach 
and go into this, this year of 2021 with renewed courage, vigor, and determination. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for the lessons. We thank you for the lessons of fear, of overcoming fear, of discouragement. We know God in 2020 for many, many people. Maybe we don't know it was far harder than we would ever realize. And hard enough for many of us who seem to be doing well. We pray, God, that you be with us, that we learn your lessons, and that we can go boldly into the new year with courage and conviction. Amen. I'd like to ask what prayers of either joy or celebration would you like to lift up? And I will start to share one right off the bat here. Uh, Marilyn called. We have our nightly Governor Marilyn and Tim uh, evening call on Saturday night to give you an update. And Tim's holding his own. He's got another uh, CAT scan. Uh, he's going, she said he's about 90%. So it's been a long, long journey for him from the COVID journey. So um, lessons to be learned and, and they would tell you we need to take safety precautions. So anyway, Tim and Marilyn, hopefully you heard us okay today and didn't have to turn the volume up too much. Uh, other prayers of concern or joy, anybody like to lift up? And I know what Chris is going to be, so go ahead, Chris. I'd just like to thank everybody here, my family, this is my church family, uh, for the prayers and concerns for me finding a job. In the beginning, I did ask the Lord to guide me where he needs me, and I found a job at Presbyterian Homes, Fairway Knowles in Germantown, and tomorrow will be my first real day, and I just thank you all. Indeed. Thank you, God, for it. Indeed. And thank you, Chris, for calling so we could talk about that. So look forward to hearing an update for later on. Um, Teresa Grotemeyer is back. Uh, out of, she was in the hospital because of, uh, um, and she's in quarantine again, so she's bleeding her heart. Um, and she's been bleeding her body and her heart, and it's probably with Sharon. So she is back home. Uh, Sharon, they let me know yesterday. So uh, Christ in your mercy. Here our prayer. As we have a general prayer, as we embark in this new year of 2021, a joy that we have, I praise God that we have done so well as a congregation. Not every church has done well uh, during this pandemic, and I appreciate your faithfulness and, and, and our ability to kind of do what we needed to do. Christ in your mercy. For all who are suffering, for all who need guidance, all those who are lost. Christ, hear our mercy. Here, here. Do join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you are a God that stands in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, which could be the future of what some people look at. They see nothing but darkness and desolation. They see a valley of tears and unknowns. But yet, God, you are that light shining in the darkness, beckoning all to move forward bravely and courageously into this new year. Saying, whispering into our hearts, come, follow me. This, this is the way. We thank you, God. We thank you for the ability of faith to overcome fear. We thank you for new opportunities, and we thank you for this day of life, this gift that we've only partially unwrapped. Help us, God, not to take it for granted. Help us to be the most loving, the most awesome, and caring that we can possibly be today. Planting seeds of hope, love, and joy in all we meet. And now, God, we together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed all of us, as we know. And we have shared our gifts of, of love in our morning offering in the back. So at this time, we will give thanks to God for that gratitude um, in, 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 in music from Mark.
Jesus took bread, blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And as was the custom, Jesus took a poured new cup to a cup in which his disciples were drink. And he said, this is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. It is the cup of ultimate love. Let us pray for Lord Jesus is the bread of life. Let us take and eat. Knowing that Jesus is indeed the ultimate love, let us drink and remember to drink. and join together with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. <clears throat> we give thanks for God because in your own free gift of love you have reached out to us. We have refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest needs, and allowed us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, that we do become bread and peace for one another and for the world.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.